Hello, I'm Kath James, Artistic Director here at Southeast Dance in Brighton. We're delighted to be partnering with Sydney Dance Company for the world premiere of Years. After the past 20 months of turbulence and with dance companies unable to travel and perform internationally, we wanted to embrace this opportunity to share Raphael's work with our UK audiences. Southeast Dance was originally set up as a development organisation to support screen dance, so it feels entirely fitting that as we approach our 25th year in 2022, and indeed are about to embark on our biggest challenge yet by opening a new world-class dance centre here in Brighton, that I reconnect with Raphael, with whom I danced for many years at Rombert Dance Company in London and to share with you the talents of Sydney Dance Company's extraordinary dancers. We present years here within the frame of Brighton Digital Festival as part of the UK Australia Who Are We Now season, supported by the British Council and the Australian Government. I'm excited to see this collaboration between Raphael's incredibly physical choreography and the director Clemence Habicht behind the camera. As we wait to emerge from the pandemic and for our country's borders to open and welcome our favourite dance companies here again, please enjoy years. I'm Darcy Bussell and I'm here with Raphael Bonicello, who is our director of Sydney Dance Company. And I'm one of the ambassadors for um, a season between the UK and Australia, celebrating um, our relations between the creative industries. And it's so exciting to be able to talk to you about the choreographic process and creativity and what you're doing now as part of this season. And I'm so, so happy to be here with you, Darcy, and to see you after, you know, in the flesh, well, digitally in the flesh, <laughs> and to have a chat because it's really exciting and it's opening this week and it's been one of those labors of love which came out of being in lockdown and having this need to keep creating and keep flexing that muscle, which is, you know, our bodies, our minds and, and, and the company, the Sydney Dance Company, I see it as a muscle sometimes that needs to keep exercising and keeps, needs to keep moving. Well, I love keeping an eye on what you're doing. And it has been a tough time across the whole of the world for all these, um, for the arts as a whole, but for dancers not to be, you know, to have that creative force within them and wanting to perform for their audiences is tough. And so you've come up with a wonderful idea called Years, and it's sort of looking back across your wonderful history as a dancer, choreographer, um, and where you sort of started, isn't it? Yeah, because we were in the middle of a tour um, and everything was going really well here in Australia in terms of COVID and so on. And then we went back into a lockdown in June and we were at home and all of everything had been canceled once again. And for me, stopping and waiting for things to go back to normal was just not an option. So I started to think about, you know, how we could safely continue to create and continue to move forwards while we weren't able to be together in the, in the same space at the same time. And I started doing something that I don't do very often, which is looking back. Suddenly yeah. I was thinking about, you know, me as a dancer when I was a dancer in Rambert in London and where I spent like 12 years of my career. I was like on a Friday night, once again at home in my computer, looking at, you know, hard drives. And I found some videos of me dancing in 1998 because <laughs> I used to record myself all the time. And that was how I would start to choreograph because I was yeah. still a dancer and I didn't have a lot of time in the studio. So I would do a lot of um, sequences and phrases and improvising and I would record it. And then whenever I could get the dancers, I would very quickly just teach them or get them to learn it. And I came across those videos and the idea of creating a film called Years that went back in time and that in a way, you know, borrowed and was inspired by different moments in my career. Then, you know, Bonacella Dance Company that I had whilst, you know, once I stopped dancing and I was in London. And then also a little bit of my beginnings in the Sydney Dance Company which were already 13 years ago. And a little bit of, <laughs> I know time flies. So it all became part of, you know, what drove this project 
in a way. Yeah. And and it's it's quite, I think everybody's gone through a little bit of that, but they haven't had the opportunity you have to create a film from it. But it is, mm. it's using and it's it's that ethatic sort of process, isn't it, of um that journey you've been on and giving the dancers who are young and talented a little bit of your history, but then putting their own kind of selves on top of it and their future. Because as any artist, we're always looking forward and what we can create next and what inspires us. Um, but of course, history inspires us constantly and we should be learning from it all the time. And I, it's just really exciting because this is not just a company piece. These are, is it 31 solos, is that right? It's, yeah, it's 30. So the, I used the Goldberg variations and the Goldberg variations have two areas mm -hmm. and then 30 variations on the area. Yeah. So because uh, we started the process at home in lockdown, and I sent all these videos to the dancers to learn it in the kitchens, living rooms, back gardens, you name it. They, they, that's, and I decided that I would create 31 solos because I thought, look, when they allow us to go back together into the studios so that we can work together, even if it's one and one, <laughs> me and one dancer, because we're not allowed to have more people exactly. in the room. So it came out of, using that this moment in time where we were in lockdown, we were at home, um, people were unable to touch. You yes. know, when we went back into the studio, it took, now we can touch again. But yeah. at the beginning, like, you know, a month and a half ago, we were still with masks, we're still keeping the distance. So this idea of the solos came out of a necessity because yeah. I thought, okay, so I'll, I'll, and I actually was able to work with 10 dancers only. So the company will have 16 in total. But yeah. um, only 10 dancers were able to do the project because they're all young, healthy individuals and not everyone could get the vaccine quick enough. So yeah. that was also part of the, of the lottery of, of being in this work. Some people um, had to wait yeah. for their turn to, to get the vaccine. Yeah. Some people were ready. You know, I'm much older, so I got it <laughs> much earlier than, than them. And, and then as dancers kept, uh, you know, joining us, I kept creating on them. So there was wow. a lot of like, you know, it was like, okay, I have five dancers this week. I'm gonna create on you. And it was yeah. like you just said, a beautiful thing for me to share things from the past with the people I'm working now. And while we were in lockdown, I would each week send them a few videos. And then I would say, be like, okay, this was 2001. And in 2001, I was with Rambert and I was on tour and we went to these places and we went to the other one. So I actually shared with them yeah. what happened in my life in that year. And then I would ask them also to tell me, you know, so where were you in 2001? It's like, oh, I was, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Some people, it's like, I was two years old. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, so it, it, was, it was a nice exchange um, yeah. and, a, and a beautiful way of, you know, getting to know each other and, and, get, and being yeah, well, close. Yeah, keeping communicating. So what the art is is how it communicates and, and adapt. And I think that that's what the rest of society pick up pretty quickly and how clever the arts are in adapting to the times and, and, and keep rolling, you know, keep evolving. Uh, we should never go stagnant, you know, it's constantly evolving and using what we have around us at that time and what's possible. Um, but it's so important. I found exactly the same uh, with all the young, kind of apprentice that are going into companies, dancers, um, that you want to keep their imagination and their, their love and dedication for what they do and not, not think that it's gonna be left, you know, and forgotten. It's, ne it's, we need it more than ever. And I think it's just wonderful that you've been able to create a film. So you've said how you've come with the idea, how you mm. inspired the dancers to take that next step with that, that journey of yours. Now with the music and the collaboration, a little bit more of the process of the actual choreography. So 
what happened was that I started sending the, the videos to the dancers while we were still at home. Like it was about three weeks that we knew that we wouldn't be able to be together. And like I found all these videos from different times in my process, I sent it to them and they just learned them. And then I also gave them tasks on these videos. So they had to sometimes, you know, reinterpret something in their way that they had seen me do or from one of my works. So we accumulated this, you know, like quite big, let's say, you know, 20, you know, 2001, 1998, we called it by the years. Of, yeah, nice. And exactly. And then when we came into the studio, then I had already listened to the variations, to the Goldwyn variations nonstop. And I already knew that there was that solo, that idea of that movement that really suited that dancer because of the way that they are and what I'd seen them do in the living room. And yeah. that it would potentially work with that piece of music. And I had to be really ready because we had 20 days, Darcy. Oh, 20 not, not working long. Working days. Wow. So there was, was multiple, yeah. it was really it was a team like effort. Putting a jigsaw puzzle together, because as you said, seeing what they had already achieved at home in a small space and then mm. bringing that into a studio, then suddenly goes, Pff! it's like a, a firework going off in a Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And then when we were together in the studio, we were able to really delve, in, delve into it a lot further. And it was really one-to-one. -one. And like you said, we could explode into the space. They, everyone had such a hunger and desire to be together and to be creative and to be physical. Um, and then what I did was always think about it in the sense of uh, it being a film. So with Clem, um, I collaborated with Clemens Habich and he's the filmmaker. Um, that I worked with and I was having a lot of conversations with him before going into the studio and we decided that every solo would be shot in one take for example you know so and that's that very not... rare that's very rare to have something in one take especially when it's for film absolutely and especially because you know there's a lot to think about and it was going to be one take it was going to be one steady cam so the, the, in a way, the, the, the film was, a, it's a dance between a steady camera cinematographer and the dancer. Um, and some of the solos are like four minutes. Okay. So it's four um, minutes of choreography and some well, of them are 30 seconds. So it really goes from like 30 to, to four minutes, the longest. And the steady cam had to learn all of that choreography. And there was also, there wasn't gonna be a front. So choreographically and developing the movement, I knew that there was not the front that we usually have, which is an audience. The auditorium, you look at. Exactly. But there was going to be like a total 360 exploration of the space. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that I, that I forgot actually to mention earlier about this film is that we have very recently moved back to the Wolf, uh, which is where Cine Dance Company, and you've been there many times, yes. where Cine Dance Company lives and has lived for over 35 years but we were renovating for two years. And one of the great things is that we now have a studio, um, a black box studio, where we have retractable seating and it's a black box space that it's intimate and it's a small, but it's important, a very important yes. space for us. And because of uh, the situation- And that used to be the workroom, didn't it? Yes. Sort of it was, sets and everything. Absolutely. That's yeah, where they, they, well. they, they used to uh, build sets and we also had barbecues because it's a very yeah. Australian thing. You know, it opens <laughs> right out onto the water. Quite and you've an got the, place. it's a very amazing place. So in a way, you know, we, of, we always have to rent a theater. We don't have a theater. Um, and uh, the idea also for me was to baptize creatively and artistically baptize this new space so that you know, we can, we, it's all ours. So we can be there for five days recording a film. So, you know, we were able to create and, and choreograph in the space that it was going to be filmed as a black box. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other very interesting part of the process, which just added to, in a way, the simplicity and at the same time, the, time the complexity was that the version the, that we used of the, um, Goldwyn Variations is played by two pianos. Oh, wonderful. So you were able to have them in the space with you? So we <gasps> have two grand pianos 
wow. to beautiful big grand pianos in corners of the space, which is quite rare because it made it very hard for them to see each other. Um, and then there is the two pianos and there's the dancer in the middle and the cameraman. Wow. And so it's a very, when I'm talking pure is because it's music that it's played in that moment in time, dance that it's filming one, filmed in one shot. And then there is the breath and every sound that happens in that room, it's in the film. And you really and have a sense. Wonderful. Yeah, it, it's totally wonderful for a dancer to hear the musician breathe as well. And we Absolutely. forget that because we often, you know, rehearse to recorded music or things like that. But to hear the phrasing and the breathing of the musician as you're moving only adds to that emotion and what you're giving across. Um, so that must have been wonderful to have that. I mean, the dancers must have been over the moon because they would have it been- was sublime. It was sublime. It was sublime. The music. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we, we'd rehearse obviously to a tape and then the week before, uh, Stephen Emerson, and Sonia Lefschetz, who were the, the two pianists. And Stephen, he uh, is the person that, that, that did the arrangement for okay. these uh, two pianos. So it's very beautiful because it has this dialogue between the two pianos. Um, they're, they're communicating all the time. And then there is a dancer in the middle. And sometimes the sound comes from one piano to the other, and sometimes it's both. And it just made it like a really, really special um, environment of, like you said earlier, artists that have, yeah. have had to stop. You know, as artists, we were the first to stop and yeah. we will be the last to go back fully, yeah. you know, into what we do and what we invest our life doing. So, you know, it was, yeah, we, we made it happen. And even just making it happen felt like such an achievement. And finally, we'll be able to share it with the world, which is wonderful. What, what I've always admired about you, Raf, and, and Sydney Dance Company is that collaboration between different artists. And mm. it, it's been always incredibly exciting, especially when I was with the company and, and, and you know, by your side. Uh, I felt like I was by your side, not that I was doing too much, but I was loving every minute of it, watching you in action and seeing that collaboration. And it's not just the music and getting those live musicians you know, on the stage or in, in the film studio with you, but it's also the designers. So you had lovely Bianca doing, she was a fashion designer, Australian fashion designer, doing the costumes. Could you tell us a bit about that? Because there's a, a very close relationship there, isn't there? Yes, I've worked with Bianca before um, in a work like two years ago, and I was left wanting more, and Bianca, um, loves dance and movement. And that's always very present in her designs. It's something that you can see in the way that the clothes, you know, fit the body and move with the body, just in her, you know, the designs that she do, does for people. So for me, when, you know, I knew the music that we were going to use, which was the Gordon variation, which is so sophisticated and, you know, incredibly simple, but also complex, you know, from the most simple variations to the mm -hmm. most, complex. It's and, so and, telling, isn't it, when you listen to them? Absolutely. They tell a story without you even thinking of a story. They tell it to you as they're... Yeah, and it's full of emotions. You know, you go from like, all, like sorrow and loss to absolute like cuteness and joy, you know, yeah. and like even humor. And, yeah. and so I, I asked um, Bianca if she would be, you know, um, joining us in the process, because I felt that her craftsmanship in the way that, you know, her designs are very, very elegant and, very so, and, the, and then the sophisticated architecture mm. would be perfect for this work. So it was one of those things. So it's interesting because you will see when you see the, the, the film, the dancers, some of the dancers are wearing dresses, like dresses. And yeah. for me, that's like a new thing. So, yeah. you know, she really pushed me to like, you know, and, and they move so beautifully and they yeah. just add so much. But it was something that I felt like, you know, let's, 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 let's go with it. Let's explore that. And she did an incredible job. I mean, I was always like, get the scissors out. So, you know, the dressings kept going up and up and, yeah. you know, but- uh, <laughs> Or a Seymour body, yeah. Exactly. But it's, it's a really good challenge for you because I know you love to see the physicality <laughs> of the bodies. And I've known that from the beginning of your works, but, uh, especially if you're working for film, I think it is important when you're in a black space like that to produce color and movement 
extra, you know, that extra layer on top. Um, and I think that will really, it really gives more, I suppose, again, that collaboration of artists, but gives more for the viewer because there's so much to take in besides the music, as you said, which is this vast emotional ranges, isn't it? Besides what the dancers give off, the musicians give off, and then the designer gives off. Um, so it's incredibly exciting. I can't wait to see the full thing. And it's 45 minutes long, is that right? It's 45 minutes long. Um, and it's, you know, the an incredible journey, you know, that as yeah. I was saying, the music, you know, it's pure simplicity, but it's sublime and it's tender mm -hmm. and can be delicate. So for me as a choreographer, there were so many textures, so many qualities that I could explore. And as someone that's so interested in craft, you know, in, 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 in that sense of how movement, the body, you know, in, in action, it's, it's, it can it's meet and it can connect, you know, and it can make us feel. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, a beautiful journey to be able to push the dancers, you know, to dig within themselves. You know, not, not you know, we all love, we, we were all dying for that solo, mm. <laughs> you know, to perform that solo, to have that opportunity. And yeah. with some of the dancers that I've worked in this project, it was our first opportunity to really one-to-one -one find, you know, um, something that connected us. Um, and that, yeah. That That's what we forget it. is how good dance, and I, I might be a bit biased, but how it express emotions that people are feeling at this time. And, and it has, what a tough time it's been on every individual, you know, all over the world. But what's hard to do sometimes is to express those feelings and then to understand them. And why dance is such a useful, tool but also a beautiful thing to be able to watch is because it describes those emotions that everybody goes through and, and we're so lucky to be able to get that opportunity to create films like you have done um, so people can use it as a piece not a, just a piece of joy and and medicine but something that takes them further to understand themselves to move on as well Absolutely. And it is, like you said, in moments like this, where you realize the value of, you know, dance, the arts, culture, you know, it's what brings us together as people, it's what fills in the gaps, it's yeah. what connects us, it's what, you know, that I often think, like, what would life be without it? Yeah. You know, probably... Empty, basically. <laughs> Empty, not much, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not a life biased, that I want... But exactly. empty. No, but I think, I think, I think, and I hope that a moment like this where we it's been taken away from us even from us that we're biased you know but i think people it's it's people have a more desire to consume live performance you know experiences like, isn't it it's very much about life experiences and and the flavors you get with those experiences instead of owning material objects we want to feel life in different hmm. ways and to yeah, and, and I'm, I'm very excited about that. And I'm excited about that next generation getting those and respecting that even more and more. Um, and it's very exciting. But I, I love that it's, you know, Bach and that history with that musician is still, you know, that classic that we can't do without, which is, is extraordinary, yeah. isn't it? And you think how old those variations, those piano scores are, and they're still being used today and still being, oh, I mean, for the musicians to play them, it is, it's, if you can achieve that and, and produce great music, it, it's quite something, isn't it, on the ladder as a musician to play those pieces as well, isn't it? Absolutely. And um, for me, I've used back, back music before. This, in fact, the Golden Variation, it's a very monumental and iconic piece of music and it's been choreographed multiple times by multiple choreographers and I knew that but for me what was interesting is that I've never used one of his keyboard pieces so in the past I've always used violin or, or cellos even or so like for me what was interesting is that it was a keyboard piece and all of the music I've used of him in the past has been strings and I've always been really you know drawn to the strings 
for some reason. And I, but I always knew I wanted to do a piano piece. Yeah. And, you know, the, the fact that this was going to be a film and exist as a film, hopefully maybe yeah. one day it will be a performance piece on stage. But at the moment, the real reason and the real drive was to do something that recorded this moment in time. You yeah. know, something that, you know, against all odds, yes. you know, at a time that it's tough and it can be quite grim and it has been for everyone to find some beauty, you know, yeah. and to share yeah, that beauty with so, the world. It's so important, so important. It's unique to the time now and we will remember it for that because it came about because of what we've been through. Um, so thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I can't wait to see you on tour and I can't wait to see you in Australia because I will be there. I can't wait to see you too. And so much love, Darcy, and such a pleasure talking to you. Mwah.